a financial instrument has to be initially recognized at some point. In doing so, IFRS 9 gives us the following guidance. An entity shall recognize a financial instrument when it becomes a party to the contractual provisions of the instrument. Now, it already starts looking very abstract. So let's have a look at this. Uh, what does it mean to be really a party to the contractual provisions? So, for example, if a bank lends a loan to uh, an entity, it has a very specific agreement with the uh, borrower. And according to that agreement, both parties have rights and obligations. But if an entity purchases stock from a stock market, that entity doesn't go to the issuer entity and signs an agreement with that. Rather, this is all in the air. So, IFRS 9 understands this and considers this a virtual agreement whereby the agreement is in the air, like it's like it's in the setting. So the issuing entity actually registers its security with the corporate, uh, with the Security Exchange Commission, and the rights and obligations are protected by the corporate laws. Also, in case of a regular way purchase of a financial instrument, that is from stock market or from an open market, we also have an issue of a trade date and a settlement date. So what are these? So basically, when we uh, place an order. Uh, for purchase of stock or a bond from a market, we have a date where we, put, we place that order. Then we have a date where that order is actually executed. And after the ex execution, probably after one or two days or three days, the order is eventually settled. So when the payment is actually made from our account and the shares are received in our account, so that is called the settlement date. <clears throat> so do recognize initially uh, at a settlement date or a trade date when the order is executed or when the order is settled. Uh, IFRS 9 allows, gives the option to the entity as to which uh, uh, date does it choose to recognize the financial asset initially and once an entity chooses a basis for initial recognition, it shall recognize all financial instruments consistently on that basis. In this sweet little video, we just looked at the initial recognition. From the next video onwards, we'll try to look into the classification in accordance with IFRS 9.